Welcome guys to this build guide for Infinity Blades. We have a jam-packed agenda and I hope you are excited to see what is going on behind the scenes of this build. Before we dive in, let me caveat by saying the following. The highest area I have cleared as of making this video is 187. I can push further, but I'm trying to farm a better weapon as well as some gear pieces. To push all the way to 217, I need better gear. It does not mean the build is not able to get there. With that out of the way, let's get started. And if you like what you see, please leave a like below or even better, subscribe. It helps the channel out a ton. And with that, let's dive in. Let's look at some skills. Our main skill is Infinity Blades and our main focus here is twofold add as much damage as possible and increase our damage based off of number of ailments an enemy has. Key skills we pick are three dimensional scoring, cruel persistence, quantic charge distribution, material sinkhole, cosmic recursion, and wounds bleed eternal. For our element, we pick Shadow, which is the hallmark element for the build as a whole. Since ailments are important for the build, we are also using Thunderstrike, and this skill is specced into Rend damage to allow us to also apply the Rend dot, hence increasing our overall damage output due to picking Rebuilding the Trinity. This gives us a flat damage buff as Ren damage. I also picked Nice hitting ground for the stun and having a cooldown on the skill fits nicely into the rotation of the build. The rest of the nodes do not matter. We have two meat shields in our chaos golems. They also apply a dot, which is nice, but we are mostly using these for increased survivability spec into all the health nodes and make sure you pick the node that transfers some of the damage you take to the golems. The last two skills are Avengers Auto Turret for Rage Dump and some ailment score chance with either damage and Bulwark of Dawn for sacred ailment stack proc chance, but more importantly, survivability. Guys, that wraps up the skills. Let's look at the passive tree before we wrap it all up with gear and some thoughts about playstyle. As mentioned earlier, this build centers heavily around applying ailments to the enemy to boost our infinity blade damage. The more ailments, the happier we are. To do this, we are utilizing the following key passives. Insidious Decay for added ailments applied per hit, Toxic Emantations for a passive 2 seconds Poisoned Ailment tick and Occult Affliction for the added damage per curse stack affecting an enemy. For our minor nodes related to ailments, we pick Power of the First Men to further boost number of ailments applied. To help boost our flat damage, we are picking Undertaker Pick up the green orb for a flat toxic damage increase. Bestial Frenzy, more enemies around you equals more damage. Merciless Lethality for added crit multi. Immortal Offering for extra damage added when killing an enemy affected by ailments. The Wild Card for more crit chance. And Clandestine Execution for bossing or that annoying tanky mob that remains after you wipe out a pack. Some filler nodes to be aware of related to damage are these here in the Dusk Glaive area as well as the crit nodes in Alastor. Infinity Blade scales off of your weapon attack speed so we want to add a bit juice to our attack speed. That's why we pick Intravenous Neural Cord and some small filler attack speed passives to boost our attack speed. Feast of the Kraus, it's on the path, I took it, not sure if it does much for the build, feel free to skip this point to save one passive. While leveling, you might want to pick the skill passive for Infinity Blades in the skill itself that gives you willpower on crit until you can sustain it comfortably without dumping too many turrets by getting the willpower reduction nodes on the tree. 
When it comes to attributes, I leveled by dumping all my points in a 50-50 ratio between ferocity and agility. Then at level 50, when I had some attack speed on the passive tree, I went for a 80-20 ratio between ferocity and toughness. As my gear keeps improving, I respect more and more points off of ferocity when I can to further bump my survivability. Feel this out as needed. For the record, I leveled this character from level 1 using Infinity Blades around level 15. Before that, I used the summoner tactic. You can look up my Level Like a Pro video for more information on that. No uniques are required for the build, but they are definitely nice to have and a goal you can aim for as you progress through endgame. For the gear specifically, the helmet gives us more flat damage and healing when 5 curse stacks are applied. We will sometimes also apply 5 weakness stacks that gives us additional dot damage on the enemy surrounding the target we are hitting. The ring is a good flat damage item as well as the gloves. The belt I use for magic find at the moment, but if you want to go for damage, get flat shadow damage and occult damage on the belt, or even better, flat plus damage from the bloodline modifier pool. The catalyst I was lucky to have drop at level 80 item level. It's a nice damage boost for the build. The boots, nothing to write home about. I have not yet seen a good pair with occult damage, health, and most importantly, at least for me, movement speed. When it comes to the weapon, a gun or dagger both works, but look for the one with the highest flat fist. If you can get shadow on it as well, that's an added bonus. Elemental damage or material, toxic, rend, does nothing for the build. For the rest of the gear, we are looking for shadow damage to spells, occult damage, health, and resistances, and as mentioned, obviously, the plus flat damage increase. Let me talk more generally about gear in this game and why you most likely will hit a roadblock around 150 or slightly higher dungeon level. The best gear in this game, besides build defining uniques, are legendary gear with the plus damage modifier, as you see here. Many endgame builds have these on. I don't think it's fair to expect everyone to have these laying around. I make build guides starting the character at level 1 and equipping the gear I find. An ARPG for me is about the journey and using items from my bank kind of takes away from that fun. So don't get discouraged if you hit that roadblock. Find a level you can farm at at a reasonable speed and better gear will drop. When it comes to the playstyle for this build, it's very straightforward. Use Thunderstrike and Bulwark on cooldown and when your willpower is low, dump a turret to get it back. One thing to note, and especially on PC, when cancelling the Infinity Blade animation and you're using a gun, is that the character might not move but instead shoot another enemy where your mouse is targeting, making you stuck, probably die and rage quit. I found it better to use the skill on the keyboard key versus my mouse. I felt I had much better control over my positioning with this setup. And guys, that's it. If you like what you see, feel free to leave a like below or even better, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.